Peace and love. Hope all is well. Hope you're feeling blessed and uplifted and high vibrational and supported and respected and protected. Now, I feel called to really kind of connect with those that are a part of the channel, those that will be coming a part of the channel. And I'm feeling called to do a meditation and maybe pull some cards and connect with energy. Maybe Mother Gaia. Now, I feel that it's important to not only have a physical space, such as the channel We The Collective, where we can connect and discover truth or explore truth or just open ourselves up to possible truths and feel each other on an energetic level, support each other on our spiritual journeys, on our healing journeys, on our human experience. But I also feel that it's also important to kind of create an energetic environment or an environment within the mind space where we can all connect, where we can all connect to and feel safe. Now, I feel that this is something that kind of should continue throughout the channel. Kind of when I started the channel, it did begin with meditation and connecting with Mother Gaia and kind of connecting that way. But now I feel the need to maybe... It's more so energy saying to me that it's more intentionality, the setting the intention to connect energetically or just knowing that we are connected energetically, even when we are not physically on the channel or when we are not, when you are not watching a video and I'm not creating a video, you know. But also, um, I was getting this sense that through meditation, we can like speak and not, term, not in terms of speak, in terms of like say things or kind of telepathically transfer messages to one another. But it's more of a sense that energy was making it, making me aware that if I kind of put out meditation where we are setting the intention to connect, what I can do in that meditation is ask you guys to kind of um, feel me, I can feel you, and you can... It's almost like setting the intention to kind of send me messages or to send me things that you want guidance on or just to send messages of love or just emotions and feelings, you know, it's just to get a better feeling of each other. You're on this channel and I'm channeling messages for not only myself, but for the viewer, for you as well. So it's like, it's co-creative. There's something about it being co-creative, creating a meditation space together. So let's just burn a little bit more of this sage. Again, I hope everyone's doing well and feeling high vibrational. You know, I can't lie. The last few weeks have been not challenging, but in terms of having to navigate my spiritual path, I've had to have my hands on the reins a lot more. I've had to really focus upon my journey and holding the peace, not only for myself, but others that are in my energetic environment. I've also had to like remember that everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for us, for our highest good. Any darkness that I may be experiencing at this time is happening for my highest good. It's to elevate me, it's to push me to a higher state of awareness, to broaden my perspectives on the world and situations. So there will be a timestamp most likely on this video if you are not wishing to join us for meditation and you are just looking to kind of receive the guidance via tarot and intuitive messages. Now, yes, you are all invited to join us and join me in this meditation. There is no script for this meditation. It's just what feels natural and what is innately coming through. So peace and love. Ashe. Hey, how are you? 
high we, high you that is a part of the we. I thank you every day, every moment for joining me, for being present with me, for allowing me to be a part of your journey, for allowing yourself to be a part of my journey, for allowing me to have some form of impact in your life or some form of space in your life, whether that's just one minute or five minutes a day or five minutes a week. I thank you for joining me in creating this space, this space of growth, of transformation, of healing, of acknowledging pain, of acknowledging darkness, of acknowledging light and expressing light and expressing and being love and feeling loved and knowing that love is true. I thank you for honoring my truths, for respecting my truths, for listening to my truths, for seeking understanding of truths that are coming through and, and being expressed through me. I thank you for being a part of my story, a story that will continue beyond this life, a story that will be carried with me throughout all lifetimes all moments. We are all blessings to the earth, to one another, gifts from source. We all possess magic and light and stardust and infinite knowledge and wisdom that we can share with one another that can uplift the world that can help the world to heal and transform and come to greater understandings and greater overstandings we are love we have been love we came to experience love to share love to understand love to get to know love on a physical level of what it means to act out love, to see love be acted out by others. This world is full of light, full of possibility, full of chances to expand and illuminate and become something greater. The world is also full of darkness, full of people and things and energies that often like to hold us down and stop us from reaching our potential. And we often run and shy away and hide from this darkness, allowing this darkness to act upon its own, to begin to create its own free will and act upon its own free will and manifest in ways that we don't wish. And it's time for us to really take rein and take control of the steering wheel of our lives, of our darkness, of our healing, of our ascension. And stop allowing things to pull us back, instead allowing everything to push us forward. How many times are we going to allow energy, our spirit team, our guides to push a memory into our minds for us to acknowledge and heal it and then we hide from it and shy away from it. How many times are we going to allow the same memory to pop up and trigger us before realising that we need to acknowledge it, before realising that it's being put in our minds for us to heal it, for us to come to terms with it. When we don't heal our triggers, when we don't acknowledge our darkness, we become very reactive. We become reactive to things that people say, even when they're not meant with negative intent. We become reactive because we're not, we're not reacting upon what those people are saying, we're reacting upon what is within us. 
We're reacting upon what our memories are saying this person is saying. We are reacting upon our past and what our past is saying that this person is saying. When we don't clear our darkness, our darkness becomes filters and causes us to see things not in its true and authentic light. It causes us to have misjudgments. The more we abandon our shadow and avoid our healing, the more we become disconnected from people and ourselves. Because your shadow is a part of you and you are a part of people, therefore when you run away from your shadow, you're running, running away from yourself and others. You become disconnected, segregated, on a solo mission, unable to realise that your solo mission is part of a grand orchestra that your your solo mission is just one of many missions that you are living solo for the collective unable to realize that your life is for the collective and with the collective, and with the collective. We are the collective. We will always be the collective. Without the we, there is no collective. There is no collective without awakened beings. The collective is not that of every single person. The collective is that of those that are activated. That their light directly impacts the matrix, that their shadow directly impacts the matrix. You see a lot of people are not activated. Are very much so still asleep. I don't mean physically in terms of being in bed and not being awake. I mean in terms of going beyond the reality that they subscribe to. We all have a reality that we subscribe to. There's a collective reality that we subscribe to, but there is a individual reality that we all subscribe to that we all agree is okay for us and our beingness. We need to go beyond that reality. We need to manifest the highest possible timeline for all of us. We need to go to timelines of love, of understanding, of togetherness, of abolishing separation and segregation, of annihilating hatred, of annihilating being comfortable in stagnant energy. It's time to stop closing our eyes to what is necessary because for too long we've been closing our eyes to the very key aspects of this journey. Our shadow is a very key aspect of this journey. Our shadow is something that we actually came to acknowledge, that we knew was very much so in existence. We come to earth to clear that, not to get rid of it, to understand it, to absorb it into our wholeness, to feel it, to see it, to express it, to love it. Be the love you know exists. Be the love you know that lies in your heart. Be the love that your mother gave you when you were born. Be the love that the soil gives to each and every plant. You are love. There is no love without you. Collective. We the collective. 
we, you, I thank you for being present in this moment, for hearing my voice, for connecting with me. And in a moment when you're ready, take yourself out of meditation in any way that you like. Starting with any body part, any deep breaths that you wish to take, any shallow breaths that you wish to take, again there's no rules to spirituality, to meditation or how to meditate, but in this moment I thank you and shortly this video is going to end. And if you wish to stay in meditation, do so. But until next time, peace and love. Ashe. Okay. I feel that we're going to connect with the energy of Gaia. We're going to use the dreams of Gaia Tarot. And we're going to see what Gaia has to say to us. What message she has to give at this moment in this time. Okay, let me just pull this down a little bit more. I'm hearing hopeful days are not over. And it's given me the feeling that we are st there is hope is still required. It's not yet time to give up hope. Okay, energy saying that. Okay. So it's like they want me to say that all timelines exist. So what I'm saying is true in one level, but you also must understand that all timelines are, do exist. But it's not a contradiction in what they're about to say. What they're saying is that we haven't yet manifested our highest timeline. Which is why they're saying hope still needs to exist. And when I say they, I just mean Gaia, but sometimes energy presents themselves more in a... Um, when energy is being most subtle, that's when, I'm, that's when I'm referring to them as energy. Or I'm referring to them as energy when I feel more than one energy. But right now, we're connecting and set the intention to connect with Gaia, but she's not um, presenting herself vividly, if that makes sense, or energy's not presenting her vividly, if that makes sense. But yeah. Um, now, it's saying that we haven't um, manifested our highest timeline and there still needs to be hope. Now, the reason why I'm saying there needs to be hope is because I channeled a message a while ago and it was on the We The Collective Instagram page. If you want to follow that, it's We The Collective underscore. And um, on that, it was talking about hope and saying that hope is a worthy frequency or a worthy vibration to hold. And it was saying that hope enables you to manifest future realities or future timelines hope is a feeling of it's a expression or a an emotion for the future if that makes sense that is what hope is you're hoping for something to come into fruition or you're hoping for something to happen you don't hope for something of the past to happen you know you hope for something in the future it projects your mind into the future projects your manifestation into the future so they're saying that um, basically that hope is still required don't let go of hope in that message, they're also telling us to think again about what we want to manifest. And this is the message that energy keeps pumping out. It's important for us to really have on our mind space, not what we just want individually in terms of manifestation, but also our collective manifestation. Collectively, we are stronger. Together, we are stronger. Our mind power is stronger together. 
Okay. So we have the card of pressure coming out. Now I don't know why I feel pressure upon the earth. I'm getting like a crack in the sea. A uprising. Or maybe an uprising of the sea. A cracking the sea. Beeline. A crack in the sea. Something to do with like blood and maybe like some death. Essential. I'm not mm. sure. Let me... I'm not too sure. I'm really not sure I want that. Okay. Okay. I understand. The animals. The animals are becoming a lot more um, in tuned. And we're becoming a lot more in tune with the animals. But this, for some reason, I'm getting this energy of seeing through the animals' eyes. It's almost that... Um, this woman is seeing through the eyes of the dog. Almost like she's connected her mind to the dog's mind and is seeing through the eyes of the dog. So I'm getting, okay, I'm getting that this is a very possible and is a very real um, ability to be able to see through somebody's eyes. Okay, now energy is presenting it to me in many ways. They're saying that, um, like, clairvoyance, clear... Audience, is that the right one? Yeah, clear audience. They're saying that they all are very different within different people. They're saying that the way that this gift is, is that it's different within many people. Seeing through the animal's eyes, for some, they're talking about it being empathic. Some people are empaths in terms of being able to see through the animal's eyes and put themselves in the animal's shoes. But they're saying that, like, some people who are that of the mind space, I don't know why, but I'm getting like telepaths or just I don't know something to do with the mind space and the third eye something who are people who are gifted with that area or whatever I don't know what that means but um it's that like they can tap into other animals minds and literally see through their mind I mean sorry see through their eyes I'm also feeling that there's a need to clean the sea or clean clean the waters. Okay, the same thing about the animals and the dirty water. That's their home. Throwing trash into their home. The animals are being put under pressure. Sea life is being put under pressure. The same, would you want to eat if you had lots of dirt in the bowl? Like, would animals, would these, mam uh, not mammals, would these um, marine life, would this sea life want to eat food if there's dirt in their water? <laughs> if there's rubbish in their water? They're saying, have respect. Be respectful. Be compassionate. Look through the eyes of the animals. And just like saying, like, why do you have to physically see to be able to feel? Why can you not feel before seeing? Why can you not feel that something is wrong before seeing that it's wrong? Why do you have to see that something's wrong before you feel and know that something's wrong? Why can you not have respect for the animals without having to see animals be slaughtered or animals be killed or just disrespect towards animals. Why do you have to see it without knowing that it shouldn't happen or knowing how to act without seeing it, you know? The scribe and the golden egg. So 
See, the animals have lost respect for humans. At this point, it doesn't even feel like it's a fear. It's like, we don't fear you. It's almost like we know we, there's no escaping you. But we don't have respect for you. You don't respect us. You don't care about us. We've got our heads turned away from you. It's like we would even go in a different direction from our flock to avoid you guys. To not have to acknowledge you the way you guys don't acknowledge us. It's, they're saying every single animal has a purpose, has, um, okay, now I don't know how, but it just feels right. Like what they're saying is that every animal has a purpose to, for a human. And they don't mean a purpose as in it's their purpose to serve us, but they have a function or something about them that can assist us in our journey, can assist us in our life, whether that's a spiritual ability, such as like cats, you know how people say that cats are very spiritually gifted or they will protect your home from negative energies and so forth. It's like every single animal has a spiritual element to them that is to be of assistance to humans and not just humans, but the world as a whole. And it's like, but it's almost like they need to be in contact with us or they need to be in connection with us or we need to work with them for kind of their gifts or their abilities to be utilised or recognised or something about it or to be like unlocked. It's like if we connect work with the animal in terms of it's being expressed in this animal, there is so much that can be unlocked within this golden egg. There's so much potential within the animal kingdom that still has yet to be unlocked or has been locked because of our state or because of our consciousness or where we are. I just feel like there's a lot more that animals have to offer that we don't acknowledge or we don't even give them the chance to kind of express. I don't know why, but I just get all this emotion in the animal's eyes and it's like emotions are increasing in animals. It's like, I'm hearing like their divine birthright. Okay, and she's saying that animals have every single thing that humans have, legs, body parts, emotions, a heartbeat, a mind, thoughts. One thing that they don't have is, is, is speech in the way that we have it. And the energy keeps asking me all these, not asking me questions, but they're presenting questions for me to ask. And it's like, one of them is, um, they show me like a movie where a animal starts speaking and then the humans shot like, did you just speak? Or, oh my God, you just spoke. It's like, but really we shouldn't be shocked because they are so similar to us, but because we've separated ourselves so far from them, it's so shocking that an animal is spoken. But why, sh why should it be shocking if they are just as sentient as us, if they feel? If you step on a dog's paw, you hear them scream. If you pull a cat's tail, you hear them hiss or you see them get angry or, you know? If you do something that irritates an animal, they get mad just the same way that we get irritated or annoyed or angry at a human. You see disappointment in animals' faces, you see hungry you see hunger, sorry, you see excitement and joy. You know, there needs to there needs to be this we need to stop segregating ourselves from animals. We need to embrace them a lot more. We need to bring them into our hearts a lot more. Also, we need they need to be in our mind a lot more. We need to consider them when we're making decisions a lot more. It's like we have a very selfish mindset, a very selfish way of being here on Earth. That humans in general are selfish. We're selfish to every other aspect of nature, even the plant kingdom. Even the plant kingdom that gives us literally medicine and gives us um, oxygen to breathe. We even disrespect that. It's like... The plant kingdom is not even a priority. Okay. For some reason I get this sense like within us we've been very, it's like they're giving me a mischievous energy and it's like um, this, I'm being presented like a teenager. It's like when someone knows something but they still do whatever anyway, do what they want anyway. It's like as a collective we know we know that um, anything that is flesh is very, 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 very similar to us, whether it's a fish or whether it's a mammal or whether it's a, another human. Anything that is flesh is very similar to us. And it's like, 
these knowings of our connection to the animals, our connection to the plant kingdom is very much so natural to us. It's very much so known. It's very much so within our DNA. But it's like there's a part of us that chooses not to acknowledge it. And in that part of us choosing not to acknowledge it is, is being tied up still. I'm hearing Bob Marley's part where he says, um, free yourself from mental slavery. It's upon ourselves to free ourselves. But we keep ourselves in these mental prisons. We keep ourselves in these um, lower vibrational states by not acknowledging the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom. Energy's actually been bringing up the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom up quite a bit in these reads. And that's what they do. They present a message until it's been expressed enough or until it's been heard enough. There's something to do with this um, fruit in the bowl and this axe. Again, it's something to do with respect. It's like you would go out and search for the food. You would go out and cut the food. And it, obviously, if you're not a farmer or someone that does that, it doesn't mean that. It just means that you'll go out and buy food when you need it. You will know that it's a necessity for you. You know that you need it to survive. But you're not respecting the food. For some reason, it's like this food is making you big and strong and healthy and it's feeding your mind. But there's the um, lack of acknowledgement of the fruit. This is why you're still tied up. And it's not you, I'm just saying in general, the collective. This is why we're still tied up. Because we're not respecting every part of life. Because every part of life is us. It's almost like these, not acknowledging these smaller things in life that seem smaller to us is, is not acknowledging the smaller parts of ourselves. Is it, is it not, not acknowledging our insecurities? And look, this guy's got the key around his um, neck, got the um, lock around his neck, but he can't unlock it. He's got all the answers, all the answers are on him, within him. But he's keeping himself in this prison, he's keeping himself locked up. And really, the, the, what is keeping him locked up is this lack of respect, okay, and it's just Gaia energy is bringing it all full circle. They're saying a lack of respect, not just in the animal kingdom, in the plant kingdom. It's about respect as a whole. Today I was, I was speaking with a friend and I'm only mentioning it because this is what energy does. They bring up things and my whole day or my whole week is relevant to these videos that I do with energy. And what they're saying, what they were saying, sorry, what I was saying to my... Um, friend was that Tupac was basically saying about the the, um, the black woman and in the respect of the black woman will come the respect of everybody and I basically was saying the friend the similar thing to my friend and mentioning Tupac that that's what he was saying but my point was that if we respect black people we will respect everybody you know black people are at the bottom something that needs to be explained but um, yeah if we respect black people everyone will respect it if you respect the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom, again, everybody will respect it because we, the collective see plant, the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom as being less than us. So if we give respect and love and um, authentic love and respect to these components of life, there will be respect and love for everything that is a part of this matrix. Respect. This, I keep being brought to that respect is the key to unlocking everything. It's the same, you don't even have to, like, yes, you can have love, and love is a universal thing, but the same with Benji, um, not everybody um, feels love for everything. That's not what it's about. It's not about feeling love for everything. It's really about having respect for everything because respect is an expression of love. Does that make sense? That you do, they're saying like, someone doesn't have to love something, but if you respect it, that is you loving that thing, even if you don't feel the love. They say, because, okay, 
they're saying like on a when you're on a spiritual path like everyone thinks that you have to love everything because it is about oneness and unity consciousness but it's not about loving everything because again love is still an emotion it's something that is still felt and there are reasons why you love things and reasons why you don't but respect is the ultimate vibration because you can respect somebody and still dislike them you can respect somebody and still not want to be in the same room as them if that makes sense someone can still hurt you and you can still have respect for them you may not like it's hard to say that like, you may not love them because at some level you still will. But I mean in terms of like physically feeling that love, you know? Okay. So let's pull a couple cards from the Angels and Ancestors of a cool deck. Kyle Gray. Just to close out or clarify this connection, this read. Let's just read the box. I set the intention that whatever is gained from the lessons learned from this tool will be dedicated to the grave of all beings in all places. Guardians of the Four Corners, Mother in the Earth, Father in the Sky, Angels and Sisters, Sacred Ones, I call on you and welcome you here now. See, I just heard they're, they're here. And this, it's so funny because before I was like, if I talk my spirituality and my healing and my journey um, seriously in terms of really diving deep and kind of practicing and developing in terms of divination like I always felt like I had to have this strict regimen of meditating at this time meditating for this long doing things this way and doing things that way and fasting and just doing everything and really that was like pushing me not out of alignment, it, that, doing those things is what's helped me be to where I am today, but it also made me realise that there are no rules and there are no um, ways of doing anything. Everybody's different, everybody's unique and we all have to find our own way of doing and our own way of being. And now it's like, I'm sorry, let me get back to the read. Shapeshifter, transform and unveil your gifts. So yeah, very much relevant. It's like I was just trying to get away from speaking about like the development of my gifts, but this is bringing it back out. Transform and unveil your gifts. It's like the more I began to relax into it, the more my gifts began to show. The more I began to realise that um, every moment, is a part of the spiritual journey. Every moment is a part of the development. Every moment is a part of me developing my divination, not just meditation and relaxing the mind and listening to the guides. You know, I began to realize that my guides was speaking on things that I had seen that day or speaking on things that I just had been thinking about that were just constantly in my mind. I didn't know why. Okay, it was because the guides was wanting to talk about it in the video. You know, or I used to think like, why is, um, like, let's just say Princess Diana, why is her name keep popping up in my experience? Why is it that when I've just saw somebody that I haven't seen so long, they've mentioned their name or then I've seen her on the TV or I've seen her in the newspaper. Just, I used to just think like, why? And then I would sit down and do a channeling or I would sit down and then I feel their energy and it just all made sense. It's like no rules, no expectations, just do and just be yourself. And I don't know why, but energy's had me st talk about my experience. So it, it, there's a reason why. But it's about is tapping into ourselves. The saying, find your unique way. Find what way works for you. There may be many different paths that you may have to incorporate into yours. There may be different religions that you may find truth in, not just one religion. They're saying broaden your horizons on every, in every single aspect of life. You are not boxed in. You are not confined to being any way or anything. You are not even human. You are just. They're just saying you are. And that's it. And you get to decide who you are. You get to decide who you become. Your experiences are you. Your experiences are your becoming. It's weird because energy's completely like shifted the reading. 
Let's pull. Okay. Unlock the magic within. Be graceful in movement and action. Stay rooted and grounded. Take time to reflect. Okay, so yes. These cards are basically all talking about kind of tapping into your signature energy. Calming the mind. There is a big need to kind of calm the mind. Connect with the heart center. Connect with your third eye. But with the take time to reflect, a need to literally meditate, to go within, to relax, to calm the mind. I don't know, but I just see like connecting with the trees. There's a need to connect with the trees for grounding. I'm just getting the trees are going through transformation, but it doesn't make sense because we're in spring. They're saying something about life force energy being heightened and then bring, they're bringing me to summer and the trees and the flowers and everything growing. They're great times to expand. I mean, sorry, they're great times to ground. Okay, yes, they're also saying, but with, with the grounding, there's a blossoming. There's a blossoming energy with the energy of the tree when it comes like summer and like the end of, towards the end of spring. Something about life force and that energy. Summer is about rebirth and the, re the revitalization of energy and the revitalization of life. They're saying that summer is it's a sign for something or a something to do with summer. We're going to do a read on that actually, I think. I'm going to write that down and maybe try and connect and channel some messages on summer. But I thank you for joining me and being present with me. I send you my gratitude. Peace and love. I see.